Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How are you all doing today? We are back again with another video. Today we're going to discuss about or watch a video about a woman texting her family and friends from the grave, from her own grave. And that is what we are going to watch today. Let's dive into the video first and then discuss. I know this is all going to sound very crazy. My sister lives in Jupiter. She just texted us saying that she wasn't feeling well, that she went to the ER because she felt like she might have the coronavirus. And then she said that she was kind of put on this off-site facility to be treated. Her story doesn't make a lot of sense. Gretchen Anthony is a single doting mom who seemingly vanishes out of thin air. Her friends and family start getting these strange texts, but things just aren't adding up. It sounds more like somebody has her phone and is possibly sending the messages out to all these people. Whoever sent those bizarre text messages took great pains to make her family and friends believe that she was at the Jupiter Medical Center, where her car and purse were later found, that raised more red flags than it ever resolved. Police make their way back over to Gretchen's house. Her ex-husband, Jeff, has a keypad because they share custody of their child and he lets them in. Inside her home, investigators found some spray cleanup bottles and a rag on the kitchen counter. And inside of Gretchen's washing machine, there was some rags with the substance on it that was blood-like. Upstairs, there was a broken glass frame on the landing. And then in the master bedroom, on the comforter, there were small pieces of broken glass and also what appeared to be small droplets of blood on the wall. They then went out to the garage, which is detached from the home. There was a key that had actually been broken off in the lock of the door leading into the garage. So law enforcement forced entry into the garage in hopes of locating Gretchen, but unfortunately they did not. But they did notice that there was the strong smell of some cleaning agent and that the garage appeared to be wet, as though it had been recently cleaned or hosed down. We determined that something indeed had happened. So at that point, we applied for a search warrant to further investigate inside Gretchen's home. During the search warrant, they are able to dig a little deeper. There were what is referred to as a BLS, or a blood-like substance. There were droplets in the garage. Someone had gone to great lengths to actually clean up behind themselves. What was also of note was the garage had actually been rearranged. So items that were found in the garage that may have been up against one wall were now up against a different wall or items that were present previously were no longer there. We utilized a cadaver dog. The dog handler received a positive hit inside the garage. When investigators visited Gretchen's home, we were approached by a neighbor. The neighbor asked if we were there for an attack that happened on Saturday. We weren't aware of this before. I heard, um, I was asleep upstairs in my, uh, in my room and I heard, I heard a really serious woman scream. Like, um, just screaming, like she was being attacked. Sometime between 6 and 6.30 a.m., she heard what she described as blood-curling screams coming from Gretchen Anthony's residence. That's my window upstairs. The third floor? Yeah. Okay. The one that's open, it's always open. The neighbor did not call law enforcement, but what the neighbor did do was she took a picture of a vehicle that she observed that was actually still running at the time. Saw a truck backed in that I didn't recognize. It was backed in a couple of doors down. The neighbor also told law enforcement that later that same day, she saw the vehicle back. But this time, she didn't just take a picture of the truck. She actually took a picture of the license plate. She said she noticed it because it had a lot of distinctive things in the bed, like a tarp covering it. 
Detectives were able to locate Gretchen Anthony's Mini Cooper at the Jupiter Medical Center. And in an effort to find out how it is this vehicle got there, detectives obtained surveillance video. And in the video, we're able to see a, a truck that matches the same truck we see in Gretchen Anthony's neighborhood that this neighbor has taken a photograph of. It does a complete circle around the east lot in the area where Gretchen Anthony's car had later been found. They further comb through the video and they find the very next day at 5.30 in the morning, the cover of darkness, Gretchen's Mini Cooper pulls into that parking lot and parks. We see an individual come from Gretchen Anthony's Mini Cooper. While we aren't able to see the face of this individual, we're able to tell that this person is very tall and they are dressed in dark clothing, walking away from the vehicle. After the neighbor informed law enforcement that she had taken a picture of the truck, the detectives were able to run that license plate in their database and confirm that that vehicle that was found near Gretchen Anthony's residence actually belonged to her estranged husband, David Anthony. During the initial investigation, officers reached out to David Anthony's phone and he didn't answer. Gretchen's sister, um, Sarah, informed law enforcement that she had actually communicated via text with David Anthony. And David Anthony confirmed that he had in fact seen Gretchen on that Saturday and that Gretchen expressed to him that she was going to the beach. That text message indicated that he had contact with Gretchen on Saturday morning, which was the same day that the neighbor heard the screaming. Detectives want to talk to David Anthony, so they go to the last place that he was staying, which is his mother's house. Hi, how Hey, ma'am, how are you? Hi, are you David Anthony's mom? Yes. And David's not there, his mom is, and she tells them that David came and took his black and white husky, and he told her he was moving out of the country to Costa Rica. I mean, you have to fly to get to Costa Rica, so how... No, he was planning on taking his truck. How is he going to get to Costa Rica with his, in his truck? truck? We can't just drive there. There's that's water we, in between. Well, that's what we told him. Yeah. We said, that's a long drive and stuff. David Anthony is on the road, and he is making every effort to leave the country. We believe he's our guy. It's important that while we investigate the crime here in Jupiter, Florida, we also have to locate him before he makes it across the border and possibly never seen again. David Anthony was exhibiting strange behavior in the days leading up to his wife's disappearance. David was fired from his job in February of 2020 over anger issues. His employer said that he was like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. One day he'd come in and have a really great attitude, and other days it was the opposite. On March 15th, he was in Riviera Beach, and he was seen sweating profusely, and he was acting suspicious and bothering a couple of 15-year-old girls. An officer approaches him about his truck's license plate. The numbers were altered with black tape. David tells the cops that his daughter was messing around with the truck and that she did it. Kids, what are you going to do? You okay? Not really. I'm trying to figure out why it was on there in the first place. No, I don't take anything out of your car. Don't take anything out of your car, sir. 794. He is not complying. One cop actually pulls a gun on David Anthony. Sit down right there. Do not move. Get down. Can I get up? No, get oh, down. I'm standing up. Get down. All right, all right, all right, get out. Right. Now. David Anthony tries to get into his car. He's reaching under the seat. A big confrontation ensues. All right, all right. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Whatever it is, drop it. Drop it. All right. Stop resisting me. Sir. Flat on your face, not like an airplane. Hands down like an airplane. Flat down. They eventually subdue him. Sorry. Sorry, you guys scare me, that's all. And what do they find under his front seat? Got a big ass knife under here. 
a knife, a bunch of cash, and a passport. I saw him, it just, my stomach turned over. I was like, something may write yeah. about this dude. David Anthony doesn't seem with it, and he seems to have a lot of issues at this point. Anything you say can yeah, and will be. Hold on, no, no, hold on. You got to listen no, to what I'm, I'm telling you. Trump. I'm Stop telling talking. You Stop Trump. talking. Stop talking. He's arrested for resisting an officer with violence. He post bond on March 18th. He's out of jail just two days before his wife is last seen. It's now obvious Gretchen Anthony is gone, and David Anthony has something to do with it. Just days after his wife's disappearance, police find something else disturbing about David Anthony. He came forward and told me he wanted to tell me a big secret. He wanted to confess something to me. Well, well, well. Did you all see that? So what do you think? The ex-husband or the ex-boyfriend killed this woman and pretend just to hide that the woman is dead, texting the friends to tell them, oh, like that woman is texting. What an evil. This is this type of people. They look innocent, but they are evil. Really, too much evil in them. Why will you go and kill a mother who is a single mother with a child? Why will you do that type of things? Eh? What kind of love or hate is is that is it love or is it hate why you look at him you see him outside you 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 see an innocent person but deep inside is too much evil well that is the video i just want you to see how horrible people can be especially to women i feel sometimes i if i see things like that i really i get horrified because i just don't know what to think about <sighs> may god protect women well thank you very much for watching subscribe share and we will be to the next video take care